Welcome to this YSL video tutorial. In this session we're going to teach you how to use scenarios in Microsoft Excel as a way to quickly switch between different sets of inputs in a model. What you're going to learn in this session is simply how to create a scenario, how you can switch between different scenarios to view them, and finally how you can create a summary report based on all the scenarios in a worksheet. So let's get started. So here's the spreadsheet we're going to use to demonstrate how scenarios work. It's a simple mortgage calculator. In this model, what we have is a set of input values, highlighted here in this lovely bright yellow colour, and a set of calculations which come out with the final monthly payment. The idea of a scenario is that it helps you to save different sets of input values to test different situations, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Now before we get started, I need to make a quick mention of the fact that we've created range names in our mortgage model. What I mean by that, if you haven't encountered range names before, is that instead of calling this cell here B2, it's been given a sensible label, house price. Likewise here, cell B3 is called deposit, and cell B5, and cell B7 as well. Now, range names aren't absolutely essential to create scenarios, and you can get away with simply using the cell references. But, some, but range names do make scenarios much easier to read. So if you know how to, then it's worthwhile using range names. If you don't, then look out for another YSL video tutorial coming in the near future about how to do that. Okay, so let's get back to the point, using scenarios. So now that we've prepared our spreadsheet to use scenarios, we can go about creating them. And in order to do that, you'll need to head to the data tab on the ribbon, look for the what if analysis section, and in the list of options, choose scenario manager. Now to begin with, you won't have any scenarios on your worksheet and that's exactly what you'll be told. So we need to add one. Click the add button to do that and then give your scenario a sensible name. So I'm going to call mine original, which I know isn't very original in and of itself, but uh, that's what it's going to do. It's going to save my original input values in a scenario. Now the next option is which are the changing cells in this scenario. I'm going to clear out whatever's in there at the moment. Um, changing cells are those that could potentially be changed later on. So for me, that's going to be all of my four yellow cells, my four yellow input cells. Now there is a limit to the number of changing cells you can have in any scenario. It's limited to 32. Uh, but your, your number of scenarios you can have in a worksheet is only limited by your available memory. So if you find that you need to change more than 32 cells in one scenario, you can actually create two separate scenarios which change different sets of cells, if that makes sense. Here I've only got four cells to change, so I can quickly click on the first one, cell B2. Then, as it suggests in a little hint here, hold down the control key and click on each of the subsequent yellow cells as well. There we go. Now when I choose OK, I'll see a set of what my current input values are. And here's the beauty of having range names in this model, instead of saying B2 and B3, etc. I should get the labels next to each input. Now I could modify these values if I wanted to, but I'm not going to at this point. What I need to do is finish creating this scenario, and I can do that either by clicking the OK button, which would create the scenario and take me back to the original Scenario Manager dialog, or I can click Add, which saves this scenario and lets me immediately create another one. So that's what I'm going to do. All I need to do now is add a second scenario name. So let's say, um, let's say, I inherit some money from a rich relative, um, someone who I didn't, hadn't met before, so I don't really care that they've died. And then um, click OK, and now I can enter some more inputs. So let's say they were really rich, and I can afford a much bigger house. I'm going to go for a £750,000 house. Um, but I can also afford a much, much bigger deposit as well. So let's say I'm going to go for £125,000 for a deposit. Um, I'm going to use the same term and the same rate. Um, and then I can click OK or Add again, should I want to add another scenario. Here I'm going to click OK. When I get back to the Scenario Manager, it shows me a list of all of my current scenarios. And that's the process. If I want to create more and more and more, you simply click, keep clicking the Add button, giving them sensible names, and changing the inputs. So now we're at the stage where we've added quite a few scenarios to this worksheet. And the next thing you need to know is how to view the different scenarios that you've created. 
So that's really straightforward actually. You'll need to be in the Scenario Manager dialog box in order to do this. Once you have it open, you simply need to click the scenario you want to view and then click the Show button. And all you'll see happen is that the input values will change as I do that. There we go. So that's really how simple it is. You click on the scenario name and click the Show button to switch between them. The only disappointing thing is that you have to have this Scenario Manager dialog box open in order to do that. So what's a slightly better solution is to add a tool to the Quick Access toolbar up here. So let me close down the Scenario Manager dialog. And then this is Excel 2010, but it works in a very similar way in 2007 as well, in case you're using that version. Find the end of the Quick Access toolbar. Click on the drop-down arrow. And in there, there should be an option that says something like More Commands. Click on that option. It opens up a dialog box. Let me just drag this over so you can see it. Now on this dialog box you have a list of commands on the left hand side which don't exist in the quick access toolbar and on the right hand side the tools that currently are in there. What we need to do first, this drop down list at the top, I'm going to choose to view all commands. Now I need to look for a command called scenario. I'm going to click in the list and then type in the letter S which will jump in the section straight to the uh, sorry straight to the section that begins with the letter S. Now I can quickly scroll down and here we go, there's the option I'm looking for. So there's Scenario Manager, which I don't need. What I do want is a Scenario tool. Once I have it highlighted, click the Add button and it's transferred across to the right hand side. Then I can click OK. Now that the Scenario tool is there, it's not a very good image. It's kind of a completely blank button, but if I click on the drop down arrow that appears, I get a list of my scenarios and I can quickly switch between them using the toolbar rather than having to open up the Scenario Manager dialog. The final thing we're going to show you with scenarios is how to create a summary report. So let's say you'd like to see a side-by-side -side comparison of all the scenarios you've created and what effect those scenarios have on your outputs. That's exactly what the summary tool is used for. So on the Scenario Manager dialog box, look for the summary button and click on it. You can choose one of two report types, a scenario summary or a scenario pivot table report. And pivot tables are a little bit complex for what I want to demonstrate here, so I'm going to select the standard scenario summary. The result cells box lets you select which cells change based on the inputs contained in your scenarios. So basically it's any calculations in this model that are affected by changing our inputs. I think there's actually two that I want to analyze, so I'm going to delete what's in there at the moment and instead I'm going to select cell B4 which would be the amount I have to borrow, the loan and then hold down the control key and click on cell B9 as well which is the final monthly payment. There are two other calculations here, the term in months and the, uh, the monthly interest rate but I'm not concerned about those in this summary report. So when you have your output cells selected simply click the OK button and ta-da basically uh, it, the scenario summary is generated automatically on a separate worksheet and it simply lists side by side all of your scenarios from the original worksheet and shows you the output cells that you've selected as well, so the loan and monthly payment for us. There's a bit of outlining that's been created automatically as well, so you can collapse and expand different sections by clicking the minus and plus symbols on the left hand side. And that's it. The scenario summary isn't linked to the original data, so should I change anything on sheet 1 where all my original values are, nothing will happen to the scenario summary. These are just uh, basically copy and paste special values with a bit of fancy formatting. But that's how quick and easy it is to use scenarios, so hopefully you'll find that useful. If you've enjoyed this training video, you can find many more online training resources at www.wiseowl.co.uk.